The word weird has come a long way since its origins in Old English. It was first related to destiny, or the power to control one's fate, and later was tied up with the supernatural. From there, it started meaning odd or uncanny. And odd and uncanny is what we'll talk about today when looking at folks in the good old US of A. Every nation has some kind of collective idiosyncrasy, such as those Brits that certainly talk about the weather a lot, or those Japanese that create cuddle cafes where lonely businessmen can repose in the warm embrace of a stranger by the hour or for the whole night. Male friends in some countries kiss when they say hello, women in other countries hide their faces, and this can seem weird for those who don't understand it. Today let's look at just one country in particular, in this episode of the Infographic Show, Weird Things Americans Do. A bucket of coffee, please. Okay, so maybe it's not only Americans that do this, but we reckon Americans excel at it. In a story by British author Julian Barnes in the book Lemon Table, one elderly British woman points out how waiters in some restaurants habitually keep filling up her coffee. It's quite nice, in fact, but in Britain, such service would cost you a small fortune, and Americans seem to drink coffee by the gallon. Go to France or Italy, and in many cafes, you'll find your cup of coffee isn't cheap and comes in a tiny cup or glass. Americans are mass consumers of coffee, and we doubt any country can match it. US comedian Bill Hicks made a joke about Americans and their coffee habit before he died. The joke goes, he asked for a coffee in one restaurant, and the waiter said, you want the 32 ounce or the large? How big is the large, asked Hicks, and the waiter replied, you'll want to pull your car around back, I'll start the pump. The Beast of the Feast so, you probably already know this, and you don't need to have visited the USA to have heard about it, but visitors often remark on how damn big portions are there. We've talked about this before, but not the real beast eaters. You see, in the States, all over the place, you've got those eat this ridiculously large, heart-stopping, gut-busting meal in 30 minutes and you get it for free. Godzilla would struggle to walk out of that deal without begrudgingly pulling out his wallet, yet there are names on the plaque on the wall. But why would anyone literally make themselves sick and pay for it. Only an American could explain. The question was asked on Quora about this, and most people said food is cheap and big portions sell to the majority of people in everyday restaurants. But we like this answer, which kind of flips it. Your question might well be turned around to ask, why are portions in the rest of the world so small? The United States has a good food supply and people expect value for their money. Nights everywhere. You won't find this happening all over the place in the States, but you will likely be called sir, or for a woman, ma'am, at some point in your trip. It's very polite, and visitors will have nothing against it, but being called sir will feel strange for most. Perhaps if you're in the armed forces, it might work. Even calling cops sir seems weird to outsiders. For most people, you have to be knighted to be called sir, although admittedly, some school kids in the UK might call their teacher sir. For Americans, it's a sign of respect. For anyone else, it's over the top. You'll find it's more common in the south of the US. Smokes and drugs. This is weird to just about anyone outside of the USA, the fact that at some pharmacies or drugstores, you can buy cigarettes. While many pharmacies in the US stopped doing this, you can still find it. It does seem rather odd that the place selling you things to improve your health would be selling you those cancerous sticks of tobacco. In 2014, CVS pharmacies in the US stopped doing this, stating, we came to the decision that cigarettes and providing healthcare just don't go together in the same setting. Hmm, took a while to figure that out. Beer everywhere. While you must be 21 to buy beer in the United States, you can get it in some surprising places. One such place is the aforementioned pharmacy, but you can add to that. You can find beer sold in vending machines, at some clothing stores, some coffee shops, at some drive throughs and even some special hospitals will have beer for sale. These admittedly are rare. Accident Lawyers If you've watched the show Breaking Bad, you'll know there's a lawyer who will make sure you get paid for an accident you had, or even didn't quite have. In the US, you can see signs for these sometimes sleazy guys on TV, or even see their shiny white teeth on giant advertising boards. This used to be weird in the UK, but over the last few years, the Brits are also getting in on accident claims, and their TVs are also full of nice people saying, Did you have an accident? Did you know you can get compensated for that? Call this number! Drug dealers on TV. The last thing you need when all you really need is some exercise and clean living is someone on TV telling you you can buy a possibly addictive, happy drug that can solve all your problems. These commercials might have calming music, birds flying over rainbows, people skipping and dancing through the park, and then someone saying a wonder drug made that happen. The original Zoloft ad told you you just shouldn't have to feel this way. Maybe not, but to many Europeans, pushing it on TV seems a bit too much. 
drinking games. Now for something a bit more fun, but still related to drugs, if you visit America, and certainly if you're young, you might get caught up in any number of drinking games they have over there. Beer pong? That's gotta be American. Or what about truth or dare? Works better when alcohol has oiled the inhibitions. Or quarters? No cursing, no first names, no right hand accepting, no chance of staying sober. There's even Drinkapalooza, an actual board game for drinking. In most other countries, drinking isn't always that much fun. What happens in America stays in America. Okay, so many of those videos out there on YouTube showing the glaring ignorance of some Americans about the rest of the world were made by Americans, so we don't feel like we are picking on Americans too much here. But it's not only just world history that some folks from the USA might not have read up on. We heard a story about a guy that asked an American friend when traveling in Europe what accent she thought she had. She replied, I don't have one. She thought she spoke pure English. Another tale we heard was of a young man from West Virginia who met some Brits while traveling in Israel. He asked the Brits how the highways were in England. The Brits, jokingly, replied they didn't have cars and still used the horse and cart. The guy replied, wow. When the question was asked on Quora why some, and we say some, Americans don't know much about the world, the answers were mostly related to the education system focusing only on the US and the country already being so big and diverse. The American writer and intellectual Noam Chomsky wrote that the reason why Americans know so much about sports but so little about world affairs is because that's just the way the system was set up for most people. Is it weird? You'll find it everywhere, but those videos we see do seem to make some Americans seem quite ignorant of the world outside America. Let's just say if you can't get close to pointing where North Korea is on a map but hate the country, there's a problem. Peeping Tom Okay, let's stop being so harsh now. We'll turn to something amusing and ask why in the USA, some toilet stalls have such big gaps between the doors and the outer piece of the stall, so people can virtually watch you do your private business. Many Americans have asked this online. Foreigners ask this a lot too. One guy on Twitter writes, when you're sitting on the toilet and you make eye contact with someone through the little crack in the door. A woman asks, what's the point of a toilet stall door when there is a two inch gap on each side? Most answers we can find were related to safety, to know someone is in there, to get you out quickly and making it easier to clean. There's a huge debate on TripAdvisor about the topic, but no one seems to know the answer. How are you? This could be said to be similar in other countries, but when Americans ask how are you, they are not usually looking for an answer. It's just a way of saying hello. An extensive reply about your ingrown toenail, your setback with Bitcoin, and the fact your father didn't give you enough attention as a kid is probably not what your interlocutor was wanting or expecting. You can just answer with hey. The real home of football. Okay, as we've just had the World Cup of a game called football, we might as well go ahead and say that the rest of the world thinks America is weird for calling its strange stop and start game football. But we should tell you that it was the Brits that first called the game soccer, which is a diminutive of the words association football. The word sock comes from association, and the Guardian tells us Brits back then loved to put an ER at the end of words. Later, the Americans naturally called it soccer just as the Brits did. Then the Brits decided the word soccer sounded too American and let it go. Now, the Brits and Europeans had been playing this football thing since medieval times, and it was called football back then too. But there were many types of football, including rugby. That's why the word soccer became a thing. Americans just took the word football for their own game, just as Europeans had done. But to be honest, American football is much closer to rugby, so it's still a bit weird. But let's just finish with saying, if any Brit or European gives you a hard time about calling the game soccer, just tell them what we told you. They started it. You have no defense, though, for calling a game played mostly with the hands, football. So, can you add to this list? Have you visited America and found some things weird? Are you American and disagree with what we said? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video called American Things Europeans Find Weird. Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time!